Hey everyone, Steve from the Zappable team here, and in this video we are going to be looking at the features. So this is the fourth part of our video training series of setting up your very first app. Okay, so we're going to jump into it and start to add some features into our app. Okay, so if you've been following the videos up to this point, you'll know I'm creating a golf app of some kind. And there are a few things that I'm going to want to be able to add into this app that I think would really benefit the users that are going to be obviously using the app. Now, social media is, is huge, so straight away I want to add a link to my Facebook page. So I'm just going to add this Facebook icon here, so I can click the plus symbol in the top, and that is going to add the icon to my app. And you can see immediately it's jumped onto the preview screen here for the app. And not only there, it's also added it lower down the page here. I have this um, app element added to my uh, my application. Now I also want to add a video gallery because I'm going to be adding things like golf swing tutorials um, and maybe just a bunch of reviews about golf equipment that I can use possibly affiliate links from my YouTube channel. So I'm going to add this one here. I may also want to allow people to buy things through Amazon. So an Amazon catalog will be great. So I'm going to set that one. And might want to just educate people about what events are coming up in terms of golfing events. So I'm going to add this events calendar and I want to be able to send push notifications to them as well. So I'm going to add this Firebase icon here. So I'm going to click the plus symbol there and that is going to add the Firebase notifications. Now this is one of the ones you'll notice doesn't actually get added to the app screen. This is something that you configure in the back end of the app builder, okay? So we'll cover that again in another training video, but for now, note that by going down further on the page, you can see that we have five elements added. So just to make sure we get five on the screen, I'm gonna to wanna to make sure that we get some kind of loyalty or possibly uh, something else on you. So let's have a quick look through at some of the options. So we've got ones for earning money. We've got AdMob, loyalty cards, book a table, menus, food ordering, catalogs, Amazon catalogs, iTunes, coupons, and Shopify. What have we got for content? Image gallery could be helpful. Maybe a website link. Also a PDF reader of some kind. What about user interaction? Location, opt-in forms. Now that could be a nice one. The way for people to email us, contact form, notes, and for the social elements, we've got Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Flickr. Okay, so I'm going to grab one for an opt in form. Okay, so I've clicked that one and it's going to add that into our options here. So those five elements we see on the app right now, those have all been added, although they have not yet been configured. Okay, so as it stands right now, I'm going to click Update and Preview, just to make sure that everything is running as live as it can be, meaning all the changes we've just done, we've made sure that they are saved to our app for the progress we've currently made. Now that that's done, if we see the options at the bottom of our page here, what we can now do is configure these options, okay? And we just hover over the icon we want to configure, and then we select the pencil icon. And by the way, if you've made a mistake here, you've added something that you don't actually want to add to your app, there is the recycling can there as well that you can click and it will remove that element from your app. And obviously if it's something that displays on that preview screen, it will remove it from there. So that will no longer be a part of your app. So as it stands right now, I want to edit this Facebook link and click on this pencil icon. Now this is where we configure our feature for the app okay so you'll need to do this for every single one of those features that you added on the earlier page so we can put in all the details that we need to add into here okay so the page title search facebook page by name or keyword okay so we want to put in there the facebook page name that we're running as well as you know a, a keyword as well for the type of app that we you know what's going to generate the most interest what would people write to actually find our page okay the type of information we want to display is it posts or is it a feed the share button text so what you actually want to add on there um, the cancel button text show more posts the comment show more comments so these are all obviously customizable by you yourself 
Okay, and then we've also got a custom background for this as well. So for the actual Facebook page, which will display under your settings here, you can choose to have a particular image on the background, which could be different to the one on your app. Again, this is entirely up to you. We can alter the like icon on the comment icon, again, just by selecting these and choosing what you want to use. And again, you can change the background with the color option there as well. Okay, so let's say those are your ability to add those details in. So let me go back to our features again, which is just up here. Okay, so those features are all in. So we just need to configure all these. And you can go through these one by one. I won't do everything in this particular video right now, but this will allow you to say add those features in to your app. Okay, so just hover over the one you want to add. It's like say this events calendar. Choose the pencil icon. And now we can add in some events. So let's say if we if we know, and I by the way, I don't, um, I don't know very much about golf, but I'm aware there is something, or the, at least there used to be something called the PGA Tour. And then we can type that in here. So a description of the PGA Tour would go in here. What's the start date for the event? So this has got a calendar picker here or a date picker. So we can simply click on that and it will bring up the date options for when this event is taking place and I literally have no idea when the PGA Tour takes place so I'm going to say that it starts on Saturday the 5th of May at let's say 9am and it's going to finish on let's say May the 19th at 5pm again I've got no idea Okay, so this is where you can add tags in. You can add a maximum of three tags. So if someone's searching the events calendar, these are the type of things that can come up. So I can put PGA Tour, and I can put PGA in there as well, um, and anything else that may be linked to that. So I could put Tour in there as well. Okay, so whenever somebody types these things into our, you know, to search on our um, events calendar, this is what is likely to come back up if one of those search terms are matched. A location where is this taking place and do we want to add uh, an image or also an attachment to this event that's being added in the calendar so if it's a localized event maybe the attachment you'd want to add could be an application form or something to apply to take part in this golfing competition obviously if this is just letting your members know that the PGA Tour is happening between this date and this date you might not want to upload any attachments at all, or maybe you want to upload attachments of the schedule or something that is you know, readily available or links to somewhere where they can get more information about that specific element if you can't provide it yourself. Maybe it could be a link to your website, particular page or something along there. And then you've also got the ability as well, which I should add, that you can save the events that you add in here into a Google Calendar. And obviously that can be synchronized across the board with many other things as well, okay? So you do have some you know, options again, and each, you know, each one of these apps that you add uh, the features that you add will have additional options. They'll be different for different ones. So on this one, you've got the options to select as custom styling, and then you've also got some advanced settings here again, which is to do with the Google Calendar as well. So if you set something up in a Google Calendar, then when you export that, you can export that as what's known as a JSON file or a JSON file. Once you do that, you can upload that JSON file into your app uh, and that will synchronize all the apps that all the appointments or events that you've added to your google calendar into your app okay there is further information on this link here this will take you to a video on the youtube channel that will explain this in a lot more depth as well okay so that's pretty much it for uh, i say this kind of thing there's lots of other apps out there as i say this video could go on and on forever go through each of the process for every single one of these there are other tutorial videos available right now that do talk you through some of these particular elements of the feature builder for the apps but in this one like i say we're only going to cover just the very basics okay if you want to find out more jump into one of the specific videos for that particular feature so i'll bring this video to a close and i'll see you in the next one where we'll look at the front page builder bye for now